Hello. Hello and welcome to the Pro Tips for Sports Betting Podcast. I'm Paddy Murphy. Joining me is the other way. Daniel. Hello. <laughs> Dan. Hello. Pro Tips for Martin. Good afternoon. Look at him up there in his tower looking down <laughs> upon us. Looking down upon us. Ah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the Where's the sign shirts? Where's what? Where's the sign shirts, Martin? Oh, I'm, mo- I'm moving rubbish about at the minute, so they're not available. Oh no! Outrageous. We want them back. We want them back. We want them back. We want them back. Um, oh, I saw that. Um, what are they called? Classic football shirts. They have recently got in the classic uh, AC Milan 1991 shirt. I think. Oh, it looks like a good purchase, lads. Um, anyway, uh, the weekend. Where do we start? Um, are we sick of Mourinho yet, or do we want to talk about him? He's um, he's got it in for poor old Luke Shaw, doesn't he? He was out of order this weekend about Luke Shaw. Yeah. Out of order. He, he defended his players against Sevilla and then said they weren't good enough you know, after they won against Brighton in the Cup. What, what the hell, man? Uh, and then they go and lose to Leganes as well. Sevilla go and lose 2-1 to them. Yeah, that was, that was mad. Uh-huh. Leganes uh-huh. are having a good season, though. A really good season in mm. uh, La Liga, so... Uh, but he had yeah. His did you just watch his meltdown? It reminded me of a, a little of uh, uh, Rafa Benitez' fax uh, news pe- or press conference, which was just a glorious piece of television. I don't know what he's doing. If he's not careful, he's not going to be in a job next season. He's, yeah, he just kind of, it. It's kind of burning bridges. Or what? What is he doing? Guy's seen art when he's on an old age, isn't he? Yeah. This was. Uh, I know I've mentioned it before. Here with you lads, this uh, Diego Torres book about Mourinho's time at, uh, at uh, Real. And they said that every, every, coming up to the end of his tenure, it's always like this. It's always about him saving his own ass and trying to make him uh, look good. And he'll just throw everyone under the bus. But the thing is, it's like, uh, what I don't get about him is that, like, okay, so if, if I can just to compare him to Conte, Conte's mm. argument is that he, 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 he can't do well because he hasn't been given the players that he's wanted, you know, and, and he has given the tra- transfer requests, saying who he wants, hasn't had the players, okay, and then he gets stuck with Muppets like Bakayoko. However, uh, Mourinho has gotten his men. Mourinho, you know, Man United went all out to get Paul Pogba back. They went all out to get Alexis Sanchez, and they've been getting their targets. But Mourinho still can't, and Lukaku, uh, but this, he still can't find a way to make them play. But, okay, lads, here's the question for you then. Uh, do you think that him buying uh, Lukaku, Pogba uh, and Sanchez, do you think that was him buying them because he wanted them or was he just buying them because he didn't want his competitors getting them? I think with Sanchez, he might have been the fact he didn't want Man City to have them. Yeah. So. But I think Sanchez was a dreadful, dreadful purchase. He was, um, he was disinterested at Arsenal. And you look at the stats now, he's just lazy. He's slow and lazy. Yeah, sloppy. He gives it all away. I don't know what's wrong with him, to be honest. He might have a good World Cup and come back come back fresh next season. Who knows? But something's gone wrong with Sanchez. But I think Lukaku and Pogba, were, he wanted them. Mm. For sure. But Pogba's... I don't know what's wrong with Pogba. He seems seems more interested about getting a haircut than, than playing good football. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the Pogba thing, though, I mean, I, I, I still really like Pogba. Just the, the, the same as that, I still think Alvaro Morata is still quite a good player. You've just got to play him properly or give him the proper support. But with Pogba, oh, where was I listening to this? Someone made a really good argument about Pogba the other day, is that uh, he's, he's been best in his role when he's had a proper uh, left-back behind him instead of having a wing-back, which mm-hmm. is like kind of Man United play. So he'll have a bit more support behind him. I don't know, but... Um, I think, yeah, I don't know. Like, I think he's playing a bit too deep for me. Like, look at him. Yeah, he's, yeah, like, yeah. he's getting forward a lot more and banging yeah. his right goals. But, you know, he's picking up picking up the ball against Sevilla from, like, the edge of the box <laughs> and coming forward. It's weird. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. needs, needs to be more forward. Like, oh, maybe maybe they could play Matic and Herrera behind him and let him be a bit forward. But then you'd have to drop, I don't know, Mata or Sanchez. I'd drop Sanchez, to be honest, because we can all see he's not doing that. You know? Um, Dan, uh, Chelsea, they, they scraped through against uh, Leicester in the FA Cup. Yeah, I kind of half paid attention to it. Your, your man, Bakayoko. Oh, How much did they pay for him? 
I loved way too much, whatever it was. <laughs> but 40 something million, he was living double again. He's a donkey. Oh. He was, it was a scrappy game. Um, I yeah. think Chelsea probably shaded it. It was good to see Morata back on the score sheet. Um, I didn't get why Leicester didn't change things um, until like it was too late. Because um, I thought you know they, they were missing a bit of energy on the wings. They, they brought in they brought in Okazaki for Ian Acho, but I thought they were lacking something. Um, yeah, I, th- I thought them starting Ian Acho alongside Vardy, and then Maris was out on the right wing. I thought that was a bit strange. Like they should have gone with Maris just behind Vardy. It would have been a more attacking kind of option, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, I, th- I think. I, I, I kind of feel for... Oh. <laughs> Hello, camera. <laughs> I kind of feel for um, Ian Nacho because it's, it's not worked out well for him to move. Oh, no. Let me I just... Mean, make make him sick. <laughs> Talk among yourselves there, lads. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it wasn't a great game. It was not a great... Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, te- technical expertise on this show is just brilliant. <laughs> um... Yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't a great game, um, but then again, I don't know. I think quarterfinal games it's kind of they're, they're a bit bitty, you know. They, they, they had to be decided on the day. Yeah, you're not quite close to the final, and teams are still like omni um, and whether they care or not. Ooh, an Australian <laughs> Paddy. Oh my god, what oh, is happening? <laughs> oh, it's got a dictionary there. That's lovely. Oxford Dictionary. Ooh, oh, now he's gone. gone. He's gone. He's gone. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, like like you, it's a bit of a scrappy game. I don't think Casper Schmeichel will be happy with how he dealt with the uh, the winner. Um, they could have taken it to penalties if it, if he that rush of blood to the head didn't happen. But what do you make of West Brom this weekend? They uh, choked. Well, big time. Cho- choked again. They've lost twenty four points this season from leading positions. That is incredible. Um, and Alan Pardew, as his percent win ratio at West Brom's like five point nine percent or something. It's worse than Champion Coast over at Blues. Wow, really? Yeah, his was eight percent with us. Um, Blues I, got I, a good I, win. Blues yeah, yeah, we did, we did. Um, I, I've got a few Albion fans uh, as friends, and you know, even when they went one 0 up, they were like, "We're going to lose this." Yeah, they knew. And then I mean, they're, they're all they're all demanding Pardew out, and Pardew's going nowhere. It's yeah, it's not going to make a difference. He got three year contracts or something, didn't he? Mm. I mean, I don't know how he does it. it, it we've got eight years at Newcastle. I mean, he must be loaded with the payoffs he's been getting. But yeah, he, he'll he'll be in it for the long haul. He'll be like, I tried. They'll go down. He'll try and get back up next season. I think um, whether that yeah. happens or not, I don't know. I'm just trying to think, but um, Palace won as well, didn't they, this weekend, which wasn't bad, which wasn't good news for you guys. Not good news for us. I mean, our game against Southampton at the end of the month is absolutely massive. It's huge. Honestly, like, if we don't if we don't win it, we're in big, big trouble. We've still got to play. Next month, we've still got to play United, Arsenal, Chelsea and Man City. Is he we're, back? Yeah, I think he's there. No, no. He's no. Gone. And we're not winning any of those, so... We need to beat Southampton. We got Southampton. The only winnable games I think we got Southampton at home, Stoke at home, and Everton at home. Get win win three of those, we'll stay up. We got thirty points. I think thirty seven will be enough this year. Um, yeah, like you said, it's a big win for us this weekend. You you said that you thought we'd win. Yeah, I was, it. I was skeptical, but we came out on the front foot, and Hull was so bad. Yeah, um, but we made him look terrible. We made him look really bad, and. I don't know what Monk has done, but um, Lukas Djukovic looks like twice the player he was um, three weeks ago. He, he looks nice. amazing. Hotter had a really good game. Even mm. the much maligned Czech and Doi came on as a sub because um, Gardner got injured. And yeah. Czech and Doi is not a great player. He's not a great pass for the ball, but wow. He did what, exactly what we wanted him to do. He, mm. he broke up play, he won the ball, and he just laid it off to a, to a player who could pass. It's all you want him to do is just be a physical presence, be there for headers. Supposed to win the FA Cup. Nah. Uh, hmm. No hmm. chance. No chance. Liverpool. Mark Perry. <laughs> no, Liverpool, right? Anyway. Liverpool. Who's that? Who's that? It's Chelsea, Manu. <laughs> Chelsea, Manu, Southampton, and Spurs, isn't it? Aye. Uh, um, so it's yeah. Man, Manu, Spurs, and semi. Spurs have got the away dressing room at Wembley. Um, mm. It'd be a bit weird because obviously away dressing room, 
it won't be a home game because it'll be a 50-50 split with fans. I think it'll be tough. It won't first. be a 50-50 split with fans. It'll be 30-30-40 and the 40 going to corporate. Well, yeah, that's that's yeah. very true, actually. Um, no Harry Kane either, so I, I think United might scrape that. Well, I hope United yeah. scrape that. If Spurs win something, I'll never hear the end of it. No. <laughs> um, I'd like Southampton to do well. Um, just because it's you know it's not Man U, it's not Chelsea, and it's not Spurs. Yeah, I don't know if that's harsh, but yeah, I, I, I'd rather see Southampton do well. Um, Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so last week when I was writing my previews, I said that I thought Cologne were going to maybe perform the Great Escape. Still on. Still on. The Billy Goats live again. It's yeah, crazy. I like ha- Hamburger bottom now. I went to see Hamburg. I can't even remember when I went to see them, but 14 games ago, and they won 3 0 against Hoffenheim. They've not won since, and they're now bottom of the league. Oh, man. They're going to be on to you. Get back oh, no, it's going to be next season's going to be Hamburg versus St. Pauli, which would be unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a great game. It would be a great game. But um, Cologne beat Bayer Leverkusen as well, you know. Not, not an easy win at all. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and then like the most hate, two most hated teams in in uh, Germany, Leipzig beat Bayern Munich. I assume everyone hates Bayern Munich. Probably, I don't mind Bayern Munich. They just win a lot. It would have been a speaking of Leipzig, it would have been amazing <laughs> on Thursday afternoon if they drew Salzburg in the in the Europa League, but that didn't happen. I'm sure there would have been problems if they had. Yeah, they, they, I reckon there must have been problems. There would have been surely. I don't. I can't. I, I mean. Imagine there's there's a fine right. I, I think it was um it was it was Alan Nixon of the Mirror said, "Oh, yeah. he's disappeared again." <laughs> he's got again. Um, imagine uh, the unlikely scenario: Euro- Europa League final, Red Bull Salzburg against Red Bull uh, uh, Racing Ball Sport Leipzig. Yeah, Salzburg are in the Champions League anyway because they pissed the uh, Aus- uh, Austrian league, and Leipzig are in fifth and aren't going to get in the Champions League. Unless are they, they going to say to Salzburg, look, look, lads, you know, you've done well getting this far. Let, let Leipzig have it. They're Champions League next year. You're Champions League next year. Everyone's a winner. See, that's, yeah, it's that's the would that line, be. isn't it? Yeah, it would be. It wouldn't surprise me if that happened, though. But mm. I mean, I can't see, like, either team getting to the final, so I, I think it's a moot point, but... Well, I don't know. I thought Leon were going to... Like, there's surprises here, there and everywhere at the minute. I thought Leon were going to scrape past CSKA, but that didn't happen. No, they're not going to get. Well, Leon are in big trouble, aren't they? Because um, they had uh, their own fans fighting the uh, the police this weekend when they played Marseille. Oh, I did not see that, did they? Yeah, 150 ultras uh, scrapped with the, uh, mm-hmm. with the police. Blimey. What was the result of that game, by the way? Didn't um, even Leon won three two. Wow. Okay. So, and Leon already have a suspended sentence hanging over their heads, and if they get it done, does. the suspended sentence becomes a proper sentence. Yeah. And they get whatever else on top, so they're going to get books thrown at them. Um, Probably won't like, get any points deducted, though. Just money, fine. Well, I don't know. It was, well, I suppose it's, this is this is UEFA, but it was racist chanting, flares, the whole the whole shebang. Wow. So God knows. But um, yeah, I, I didn't think they beat Marseille. And they did uh, three two last minute winner. Oh, nice! You got to love a last minute winner. Yeah. Paddy back. Is it? That, was, that, was the only, that was the only game that I bet on all weekend, lads. Which uh, back last night? Leon. No, 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 Leon, Leon on the handicap. Oh, nice. uh, and uh, yeah, because I was, I was, I had been picking games all day long uh, without putting any money down, and it was just, uh, just, just trying stuff with Asian handicaps, just getting nowhere. Um, uh, what do you got? Napoli had a handicap of minus two. Uh, the only one won nil. Uh, who else was? There was some during the day as well. All the handicaps I was just getting wrong during the day, and I thought, right, you know what? I tell you, what, I'm just going to put one on, on the away uh, mm. handicap, and, and yeah, oh, I won a whole five euros. <laughs> I, I can tell you a handicap story that's really pissed me off. Go on. I, so Danish league last round of the regular season before they they split into the championship round, the relegation yeah. round. Yeah. Um, FC Midtjylland played a Sonderiska. Um, Midtjylland second in the table. Um, mm-hmm. Sonderiska are in the relegation group, can't can't finish any higher. And Sonderiska actually did not want to win or draw because if they win or drew, 
they would have a harder relegation round group than the one they're in now. <laughs> and I'm not so I back I back Midland to win by at least two because I knew yeah. Sunderland still weren't going to be trying. It was one one. Midland scored in the 89th minute. And Sondariska's uh, Twitter account actually tweeted, oh, thank God they've scored. They <laughs> afterwards. But yeah, it was so shady. Wow. But, and it's ridiculous as well because, so in the championship round, the top three teams qualify for the Champions League Europa League. Right. But bottom, so there's top three out of six. The bottom eight teams in the relegation round actually can compete for another Europa League place. Now, because the gap between third, fourth, and fifth was so big, it actually made more sense to finish six or, uh, seventh or eighth and go through in the um, in the relegation round. Yeah. <laughs> it's completely crazy. Uh, it doesn't work. This splitting this, the the league thing doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's a ridiculous idea. Poland uh, has Poland stopped doing it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Bel- Belgium do it, it and it doesn't work. Scotland it's do it and it doesn't work. Yeah, Ireland Ireland done it once or twice. Ireland's, Ireland's new league is, a, is, is an absolute joke. There's 10 teams in the top league. I think there's only six teams in the second league or eight teams in the second league. It's a joke. When there's so many, uh, when there's only so few teams, it should just be one league and just hopefully then the bad teams will, will become a little bit better, you know? Uh, yeah, it's like Scotland, isn't it? The yeah. one thing I can tell you about this, the Irish league, um, there's uh, Derry City, who play over the border in mm-hmm. Northern Ireland, of course, at the Brandywell. Um, they've got a player on loan from Birmingham City, a young lad by the name of Ronan Hale, whose grandfather was a legend, legendary player for um, for Derry. He's got five goals in three games. Wow. Banging them in, banging them in. Yeah. Um, he's a nutcase. Um, I've, seen <laughs> him play for our, I've seen him play for our academy, and he's a nutcase. But he's a nutcase who scores goals. He'll fit in well in Derry, then. <laughs> well, he's, he's, he's from Derry. He's oh, from okay. Derry. He's yeah. from Derry. His granddad, like um, his his granddad, was a a very very famous fo- uh, player for them. His brother plays for them as well. Um, he, we sent him out there because he was in our under twenty threes and he weren't doing much. So he's like, kick up the arse, you know, go back yeah. home, score some goals, and we'll see you in six months. And he's doing it. So hopefully, cross fingers, yeah. we get a player back next season. We'll you said it, there was a there was a bit of controversy uh, in the last two weeks or so. Lads. I don't know if you would have heard of this. Uh, Michael O'Neill, Northern Ireland manager, accused the, the Irish Republic of Ireland FA of uh, picking on um, on kids with kind of nationalist names, you know. Uh, so names like mine, Paddy Murphy, for example, yeah. going after them and trying to get them to declare for the under 18s, under 21s, etc. And uh, Martin, Martin O'Neill, then the Republic of Ireland manager, then turned around and he said. Uh, God damn it! No, I forget him. Anyway, he said, "What's he talking about? He's after taking two players off of us in the, in the last in the last couple of seasons." So, yeah, there's a, bit, a little bit of niggle there at the minute between them, and I'm sure this fella for Derry. I mean, anyone from Derry they, doesn't want to play from for Northern Ireland. They all want to play for the Republic of Ireland. Which is, no, they'll play for the Republic, definitely. Like yeah, running I, mean, I mean, so many people just want to have one team on the one on the one island, and. Mm. It's it, it's 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 ridiculous. It's the two it's the two associations that don't want that to happen because as soon as they let that happen, then they will lose their little, little bit of power that they have in their in their FAs. You know, it's, well, it's, it's, not, it's not just the FAs. The International Football Association Board, which are the people who make the rules in football, have eight members, and four of them yeah. are England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. Crazy. Absolutely insane. And the re- the reason being, we invented the f-ing game. <sighs> yeah. Apparently, I don't, I don't, I don't know Northern Ireland had that much. <laughs> oh, Paddy, oh, sounds gone. It's not. It's gone. Hello. Oh no. no, no, no. Uh, sorry, the microphone here. Uh, this is my third attempt at this thing, guys. I mean, it looks like you're just about to release a single or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to ProTipster.com for more details. Was there anything else, lads, uh, from the weekend? Uh, did, you, did you mention Birmingham, Dan, while I was missing? Uh, yeah, 3-0. Three 3-0 no, three no week. Good win. Good win. Unbelievable. Well done. You must be very happy. It shows you what changing the manager did. Steve mm. Cottrell can 
can go cry into his tractor as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I guess there's no, no point mentioning the rugby, is there really? Oh, no, no. no, no Who no, cares no, about no, it, Tyson? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my, 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 my folks were over this week and I actually watched about 10 minutes of it with my dad. I'm just like, I, I can't watch this. This is, just, this is ridiculous. <laughs> what a stupid sport. <laughs> I went back to work hammering nails somewhere. <laughs> You know, um, uh, right, lads. Sure, look, I suppose we've covered everything from uh, the weekend. I know, look, I know a lot of people in, in Ireland are particularly happy about beating England on, on St. Patrick's Day and all that kind of thing, but uh, it's rugby. Do you know, it's, it's like getting excited with cricket or something. I know I use like cricket, but uh, you know, I know, I know you like cricket to have, but I mean, it's just it's just a minority sport. Oh, rugby, you know? rugby, yeah, rugby over cricket for me. No, cricket over rugby. Rugby, yeah. rugby's a guy's yeah. name, Tarquin. <laughs> Tarquin. <laughs> Jacob. Jacob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all have mad names. Not normal, you know, names. Um, the, the, the right then, let's get on to what's happening this week. So we have a, a spattering of international football and uh, some club friendlies and all that kind of mad, mad stuff going on. Dan, you, uh, one match in particular has tickled your fancy from the international friendlies. There's actually two, but one of them is not till 30, so I can kind of like, well, I can talk about both. So, Lichtenstein versus Andorra. What a game. A game for the purists. <laughs> and the best bit is, it's been played um, in La Línea de Concepción, which is a Spanish town just across the border from Gibraltar, just to make it even more hipster. <laughs> um, Why is it being played there? I, I I don't know. I'm assuming it's a warm weather friendly. I'm Maybe assuming. fan demand for the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. fan singular. <laughs> wow. Okay. No, there, there's not there's a lot of Lichten's diners in 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 Spain and Gibraltar. That's mad. Okay. So anyway, Lichten's tell us all about this, Dan. He, so, so, listeners, watchers. He's been he's been telling us about this game all day. He's so <laughs> excited. You can see it on his face. He can't wait to tell us. So I'm going to so keep Lichten's jumping in, Dan. <laughs> putting them off. <laughs> that, 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 okay, 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 sorry. So, Lichtenstein, um, they finished bottom of their qualifying group, lost all 10 games, scored one, conceded 39. But their last two friendly games drew 1 1 with Finland and beat Qatar 2 1 in Doha in December. Wow. Qatar <laughs> preparing for the 2022 World Cup by um, Limburg by playing teams like San Marino, Moldova, Lichtenstein, and losing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Andorra Andorra finished their group bottom but they took four points in qualification um, they drew nil-nil with the Faroe Islands then they beat Hungary new stats in this game they beat Hungary 1-0 they had 30% possession they only completed 44 passes for the <laughs> game <laughs> well how did they score <laughs> 23 fouls, they basically just, just it was just stop, start, fouls, 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 and they snatched a winner and, and held on. <laughs> okay, so I'm geez. not expecting a game for the purists between Liechtenstein yeah. and Dora. Um, over two and a half goals is like two points something, don't touch it, because this will be like, you know, they'll, they'll probably have to point the players in the right direction, of the, <laughs> the, you know, because they're not used to, like, attacking. Um, but... <laughs> Lichtenstein one point six six to win. I'm having a bit of that. Quite sure in it. Not yeah, sure but it. They're, they're a much better team than yeah. Andorra. Like Lichtenstein's best players. Um, so you got Franz Bergmeier, who played for Darlington, as I remember. Peter Yeller uh, played in Switzerland for a while. Then you've got the guy who you saw at Toronto. Uh, yeah, I can't remember Hesler. his name, but yeah, Hessler. And then you got Buchel, who plays in Serie A for Hellas Verona. Whereas. Andorra have got like players who either play for Andorra, who are a lower league Spanish team, or in lower league Spanish teams in Spain. They have one player who plays in a top flight, uh, Marco Valles, who plays for a team in the Vikhausliga in Finland. Interesting. So, yeah. So, I'm going for um, Lichtenstein, to, uh, Lichtenstein to win at 1.66. The other international game that I wrote about today was even worse. <laughs> Kyrgyzstan versus Myanmar. Brilliant. So for, for those who don't know, Kyrgyzstan's a, 
Mark, do you want to admit this? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, in, in, in the interest of uh, you know uh, impartiality and, and being you know, totally honest with our, our, our dear listeners and viewers, uh, Mark and I didn't even know that one of these places was a country. Sorry. <laughs> Now, Kyrgyzstan was a uh, formerly a republic within the Soviet Union, received independence in 1991. Um, the White Falcons, uh, they're not very good. Oh, we've, playing... we've lost viewers. No. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> they're playing Myanmar, and the AFC Asian Cup qualification is a postponed game. Due to security concerns, it can't be played in Bishkek in Kyrgyzstan, so they're playing it in South Korea. Now, the reason I'm interested is because Myanmar win, they'll pretty much go through their group. They snatched a 2-2 draw at home to Kyrgyzstan thanks to an injury time equaliser from Kyor Koko of uh, <laughs> Kangrai United. I can't believe I remember all the top, all off the top of my head. Unreal, isn't it? Um, Myanmar are 5.20 to win. Um, cool. The mo- motivation's there. It's not a home game for Kyrgyzstan. I'm not saying put your house on it, but is this I'm... being televised anywhere for anyone in the world to watch it? You know, I would not be surprised if Bet Three Six Five have a stream. <laughs> That's a good show. Three Six Five are uni, but yeah, something like that. <laughs> if if it's on, I'm going to watch it just for the crack. <laughs> um, Kyrgyzstan's um, just just the, the last bit. Kyrgyzstan's most famous player plays um, just down the road from me and Paddy. Uh, for Geikas Tiki, um, his name is Bernhardt, and he's a Volga German. He was born in Kyrgyzstan, moved to Germany at the age of about four. Good One of three Germans in the team. There are quite a, um, Basically, what happened was there were Germans <laughs> living in uh, Western Russia. Stalin kicked them all east, and then during the breakup of the Soviet Union, they, they came back home to Germany. True story. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. The more you know, the more you know. <laughs> Other stuff, yeah. KKST, they're in the second league, aren't they? All from yeah. problems with their fans. Their, their fans have been banned for two or three years now, <laughs> traveling to away matches. Lovely group, lovely group of lads. Marlon, do you have any tip? Got a couple of tips. Um, I won't go into too much depth because uh, there's not too much to, to mention from these sides. But on Tuesday night, um, in League One, we've got Shrewsbury and Northampton uh, playing at Sixfields. Now, I've gone for Shrewsbury to beat Northampton here at 2.19. Um, you know, they're second in the table. They've won four in a row. And at, above evens against the side in the relegation zone is ridiculous value for me. Um, and, you know, the, Northampton are in a downward spiral. It's just just not happening for them at the moment. And Shrewsbury are, are playing really well. And, I'll, yeah, I'll, I just think it's great value. Um, and, you know, Shrewsbury won the reverse fixture quite comfortably earlier on in the season. So... Get on that, personally, at 2.19. And on Wednesday night, in the National League, uh, the, the old conference, uh, Macclesfield, top of the league, they are playing Maidstone, uh, who are sitting 16th at the minute. And again, they are odds against. They're 2.54 to beat Maidstone. And I, I honestly don't know what that is. I know, they all right, they did lose to Dover at the weekend, but Dover are a pretty good side. Um, and they stumbled a little bit there, but just didn't. They played well enough to get sank out of the game, but it just didn't happen for them. Um, it was five wins in a row for Macclesfield before that, whereas Maidstone, they've scraped a couple of 1 0 wins recently, which is possibly why Macclesfield are priced as they are. But um, no wins in eight before those two, two couple of wins. And one of those wins was against Torquay, who are absolutely terrible anyway. So anybody can beat Torquay at a minute. It's 2.54 for Maxfield to win and 2.19 for Shrove. Even putting in a double, that's cracking odds. So I'm getting on both of those. Magic. Can I tell you what I found out today? Go on, go on. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, I wrote up a couple of previews there for... Pro Tips, the website. Check that out, protips.com forward slash betting news. You can see all of the many articles that uh, myself, Hundreds. Dan and Martin write every day for the website. But uh, I was looking up, uh, Denmark are playing Panama, and I felt something that I thought would be interesting to you two lads being English. Um, so, I thought I write. So, Panama, yeah, so my theory is the Panama's Football Association took a look at England's uh, FIFA uh, rate ranking. And they saw that uh, England, are, England are below Denmark for some reason, which I found very difficult to believe. But they decided to play Denmark. And in the other friendlies, they're playing Denmark, Switzerland, Northern Ireland, and Norway. 
all teams that base their style on an English way of playing football. So at the World Cup, obviously, they're seeing the English game as the game that they have to win. I reckon they're going to go to the World Cup and say, right, Belgium, have no hope. We're done. We're up. We can't do it. They'll lose to Belgium the first one. And they're playing these four teams. Like, you know, like it was Roy Hodgson, you know, when he went to, to Scandinavia. He, he made, you know, this, this style of, of English football popular over there. And, 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 and I was reading uh, before Ireland played uh, Denmark, um, for the qualification. Well, oh, I've lost the name of the manager now. Yeah, uh, Agi, Agi Harinde. That's his name. He was brought back in as manager because the, the previous manager, uh, who was Morton Olsen, he had been playing too expansive football and the results hadn't been going well and they wanted to go, to go back to hoofball. You know, so basically the Danes play a bit like Ireland. It's just give the ball to your best players and pray you don't you don't concede a goal, you know. But obviously Denmark have to have decent players though. The Christian Eriksen, uh, Kasper Schmeichel's a pretty good goalkeeper. They have uh, Chelsea's uh, Andreas Christensen and of course Lord Bentner. You know? So right uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, but they have they have a decent enough squad, but uh, but it looks like Panama's Panama's uh, thinking for the World Cup is beating beating and, and, and we get through because their last match is against Tunisia uh, and they'll fancy their chances there. But um, betting-wise, I found something that's of, of some interest as well. So the Asian handicap line for Denmark versus Panama is plus or minus 1.75. So Denmark, if they win by two clear goals, you'll only win half your bet. So they have to win by three goals mm -hmm. uh, for you to fully win. So... Um, in the qualification campaign, this bet would only have won in four out of ten matches. And with Panama, though, if you had taken them on on that on their side of the Asian handicap, you you would have won nine out of ten times. So Panama, they're not a good team, but they don't concede a lot of goals. So maybe going against the bookies, there might be something to take a look at. So wait until Thursday, have a look at the lineups because that's what's really important in this match, and maybe then decide on that bet. I'm not I'm not going to go away yet. I'm going to wait to see who's uh, who's start for Denmark. Um, I can't give a tip, lads. I think that's my first ever. <laughs> <laughs> football, anyway. Yeah. Uh, my basketball ones in the NHL were all right, but I haven't, uh, I haven't been looking this week at those yet. Um, any, any matches that you're looking forward to other than the ones that you've spoken about, lads? Anything that takes your fancy at all? I think, for me, I think China, I think it's on Thursday, China versus Wales will be half decent watch. Um, yeah, yeah, the first definitely. game. Where, where, where is that? That's in China, is it? I don't, I don't think so. Know whether it's neutral or not, I'm not sure. Mm. But Marcello mm. Lippi is in charge of China, isn't he? So um, it'll be a good game. I think China mm. uh, give Wales a good test. I think half of the Wales squad have, have withdrawn, haven't they? Um, yeah. so that's not good news. But yeah, looking forward to see how Giggs. Of course they did. Of course yeah. they withdrew. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised Giggs is still going to be. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, well. it's in Nanning in China. I'm oh, it's in China. All oh, right. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, actually, I don't think there was anything really else that stuck out. Dan, are you happy? Um, with life or with football? <laughs> <laughs> Pass, Dan. <laughs> asking, asking the deep questions, asking the deep questions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, so, I, 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 the only other game I'm looking forward to is one I'm actually going to on Thursday night, which is Poland against England under 20. It's being played at Piasco Biawa. It's about an hour away from here. So I'm looking forward to seeing England's youths play again in Poland and hopefully doing better than the last time I saw them when they lost on penalties to Germany. <laughs> mm. I saw that too, but I had a different experience to Dan. <laughs> um, uh, is, there anyone, is there anyone you're looking out for, Dan? Anyone at all? Is there any names? Um, I think there's a couple of baggies youngsters playing. I think Sam Field's going to play. Um, I think Josh Sims is in the uh, squad, isn't he? Southampton kid. Yeah, I need I need to have a proper look at the t uh, the squad um, because I don't actually I I, I only know is, uh, the game is uh, playing being played because one of my Albion friends told me. Okay. I was like, oh, that's just down the road from us. Yeah. Um, you know, so nice. yeah, I could I could go see that. Um, I know the young uh, young West Ham keeper has been called up. I, I don't think he's first choice though in, in the other twenties, um, so he probably won't get a game. Good. Hi right then, sure, we'll wrap up and uh, we'll be back on Thursday with another uh, episode of Pro Tipster Sports Betting Podcast. Dan and Martin, thank you very much for joining me and making this no such problem. a enjoyable experience 
as per usual. All right, you'll be here. You, this will be out on iTunes and YouTube and all those kind of wonderful places uh, wherever you can listen to. But tell your friends about us. Podcast is continuing to grow, but it will it'll grow a lot faster if you just tell one of your sports mad friends about us and spread the word and get us out there to more and more people. All right, then. So I'll stop rambling. And thanks, lads. And uh, we'll see you on Thursday. Good luck. Take it easy. See you later. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out ProTipster.com, where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipsterGlobal. Or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipsterEN or ProTipsterIRL. Bye.